what is up everybody and welcome back to another video today this is uh different today we're not using blender um like we usually do um today we're using cinema 4d and i don't think a lot of blender users will look at this but still if you're from blender and you're somebody that is looking at my blender videos hello um you know, so hello to the new people that just came here to check out the Cinema 4D content. Hello, hello, hello. I'm glad to have you here. Um, so, um, yeah, with that out of the way, just quickly for the Blender users and also for the Cinema 4D users, they can also participate. Um, I just want to quickly shout out the winner of last week's competition and the competition of the week before that. Um, both of those, um, Harsh won both of those, and he's, he's a great guy i've talked to him in dms and stuff he's a chill dude um all these others other competition submissions they're all really 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 great and but just this single one this right here this stood out too much like too much what i say what am i saying this one stood out to me um a lot because just the butterflies the spectral shift on here i never see anybody use that so that really catched my eye and um just these flowers, the depth of field, it's just, mwah. all of these are great. Again, thank you all for spending your time on this. Like, these, these, all of these look great, but just one can be the winner. So, um, again, I loved all the artworks, really, I love them all. All really great. And now, uh, next uh, next week, so last week, uh, was this competition here. Uh, Harsh was the only one who submitted, so this is a clear win for him. Uh, not because he was the only one who submitted, because it's because his artwork was actually fire. Like, Jesus Christ, I didn't even, I didn't think anybody would do an animation. Like, this is crazy. This is crazy good. He made this in EV because animating in Cinema 4D in Cycles just takes a long time. But this is just really 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 good quality on this really good harsh really good i'll leave a uh, his instagram and stuff in the description below go follow him um okay so with that out of the way uh let's just jump uh, right into cinema i'll see you there so here i am launching cinema um there's no there's not not a really like important what, what am i saying there is not like a like a reason for me using r20 it's just that i there is a reason I, I like it more but i just can't afford the newer ones so i got a license for r20 <laughs> so um yeah let's start i'm not gonna go over how we move around and use the interface because when you're working with something like octane um which is an extension to Cinema 4D, you should be knowing how to navigate and use Cinema 4D, the basic stuff. So, let's just start. Um, I'm just going to start by uh, getting getting a cube out here. Not a cube, a torus. <clears throat> and just giving this thing some more segments. So, just round these. Uh, let's put 80. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you have some a nice and smooth ring. 25. If we're just working with this singular single single object here, we we can really go ham on the segments. It really doesn't matter. And then I'll position my camera. So I'll come up to objects, get a camera, hop into the camera, and I will look coordinates. I'll set all these to zero, and all of this to zero. And I'll move my camera back, and also rotate my torus a bit. There we go. So we have, have it nicely in shot. There we go. So that is pretty centered. Mm, now, I'll tilt it a little bit more. There we go. And I'll also make it a little bit thinner. <coughs> yes. Okay, so now I'll hop out of my camera and I'll make a, a base where we can, which is going to be our background, our backdrop. So I'm just going to get a plane. I'll scale this thing up a bit to 1024 by 1024 maybe. So it's small. Times two. And times two. There we go. Yeah, that's uh 
That's a good size. Then I'll turn the segments. I'll put the segments to 50 each. On the plane, I'm going to press Shift C. I'll search for a subdivision surface. We, we can actually leave these over. We don't have to put them too high. And I'll drop this into the subdivision surface. And on the plane, I'll drop a bend. So Shift C and search bend. And I'll drop this bend on the plane. And inside of the bend, I'm going to click on fit to parent and put my strength to 90. So now with the bend still selected, I want to rotate it. So it goes to like this. Now it's 90 degrees. Rotate it. Oops, a lot. There we go. Okay. Now let me see. Was it this? Okay, no, it wasn't. Okay, so now in here I'm just going to put this to like 10 or something. The size. This one. The first one. So we get a nice, nicely bent backdrop. Or like a nice plane here we can use as our canvas. I'll just move it back behind here. And see my camera. That's pretty good. Let's hop out again. And we'll put more down. Okay. Now I'll start the render by hitting this little octane logo. You guys should know. <clears throat> and also, hello guys. If you're if you're new here, which you probably are because I've never done Cinema 4D on my channel. So hello. <laughs> and also here, uh I want to put this to path tracing. So get some nice light bouncing off of the backdrop. And then I'll start by making my material. I'll just quickly hit up my folder to get the texture. I'll leave it in the description below. Okay, here we are. Um, right here, this is a texture that is generated by JSplacement. I'll also leave a link to JSplacement in the description below, so you can use it. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool program. You can um, generate some nice procedural, um, not procedural, but um, some nice displacement textures. So right here. I can hit this up and I can press R and then we'll generate entire map and I can change everything about all these single parts. There's also I, I for this one right here I use Trace Placement 2. Right here. And I just played around with the scrap, big data, uh custom sprites. I don't know if I don't have any custom sprites in here. I don't, I don't even know how this works. And Agro Max. I'll leave a link to the this texture that I'm using here and chase placement in the description below. <clears throat> okay. So I now want to create a metal material. So I'll come up to materials here and just quickly make a metal material. Metallic. Double click this. Node editor. And I'll just drag in my chase placement texture. And I'll also get a displacement. Put this displacement to 8K and slap this bad boy in the texture. And also, I'll turn the roughness up on the metal so it's not that shiny. And now I can just put this on my my torus. And this instantly looks really nice. And to get some nice lighting now, I it's pretty easy. Just hop on my camera. I'll move this thing back a bit. And then I'll click on my torus. I'll get a octane targeted area light by coming out to objects, lights, and then octane targeted area light. Move this up. Make it a little bit bigger. I'll rotate it like this, and then I'll make it bigger like this. And then I'll make it not that that bright. There we go. Hop back to my camera. And I'll make the scene night, so um, I can come up to objects again, and I'll get an HDRI environment. And this is all turning dark now, because my octane sky doesn't have a texture inside of it, it's just black. So, yeah, that is just good for getting your scenes to be dark. And now with our displacement here, I want to click on my canvas here on my plane, and I want to make this glow as well. So, I'll just get a new material, slap it on there. Oh, I should put it. Okay, yeah, I'll put it on the plane. And I'll go into the material here and just quickly set up a diffusion material. Not a diffusion, a black body emission. So, emission, black body emission, and maybe an RGB spectrum as well if we want to change color. 
so now we see, if I check the surface brightness on here, and turn my power down to something like 2. 2 is too bright. Um, 1. It's pretty bright. Something like that. Something like this looks good. Just rotate this around a little bit more. So we get the perfect look. <clears throat> so we get the perfect look. So here, um, the sliding setup is it's decent. Let me just increase the size of my light. And also turn the strength of it down again because it gets really bright. And there we go. This is a nice lighting setup. And now I'll worry about the cloth simulation and the the play the the, the, <laughs> the glass, the plastic. So let me just get a plane. And this plane I'll actually how to, um, I'll just explain quickly how to keep your camera looking in this direction and you can see this, but you can move around freely in the viewport without ruining your, your angle. So you come up to view and no way it wasn't view or was it? Okay. What we can do is we can come to, where was it? Okay. Just middle mouse click on here. And you'll get to all of these four windows. And then I want to go to the top. Middle mouse click on that. And then change my camera to perspective and my display to go road shading. I don't, I don't know if I butchered that, but yeah. But now you can see, uh, now you can see we can move around in the scene and we can still rotate things around. I'll update and we still have this view. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> now we can do the claw simulation. So pretty easy. I'll just scale my plane up a bit and I'll also give this about 30 segments each and also a subdivision surface. So shift C subdivision surface and drop my plane into there. Will work. There we go. And now I will come to my plane here and I'll rotate it with the global coordinates. Move it around until it it's just barely over my um, my torus here. There we go. And then what I'll do is I will go my, to my plane and press C to make it editable. And I can see it changed logo, changed the logo. So that's how you know it is now editable. And you can only simulate editable um, objects. So you couldn't, you cannot um, edit a cube. But you should know that. I don't know if you should, but it's just something useful to know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the plane right here. Um, what we want to do now is we want to right-click on our plane, go to simulation tags, and get a cloth. Like that. And then to our, on our torus, we want to also right-click, go to simulation tags, and get make this a cloth collider. And now if we click this green play button, you'll see it will start simulating. I don't know if my um, recording will lag out here. I hope not. But you'll see it will, um, it will simulate. And this is a really cool simulation as well. Looks pretty cool, pretty smooth. And you can see on here that it's clipping, that it is clipping through the torus. And that is because the displacement is pushing the torus. Um, it's, it's basically fake geometry that this is, and it just follows through that. So to fix that, what we can do is we can come to the node editor, click on our displacement, and the mid-level right here, we want to put this to 0.5. And as you can see, this will fix it. There we go. And now we have this this cloth. Um, and then we can, can play it a little bit more here. Back and forth. There we go. So this looks pretty cool. Um, with this, I now want to just come to my plane and remove the cloth simulation and now we can see this is a a stationary object which is no longer simulated it is just a mesh now that looks like this so we've simulated it and basically converted it so with this we can now do whatever we want we can put whatever material on this um but i will get a speculative material so materials cre create and then I'll get myself a specular material and I'll slap this on the torus here. 
and you'll see. I'll turn to that speculum material. Now double clicking this. I want to come to the roughness and just click on the up button once or twice to get some um, some roughness in here. And after that, I want to come over to my dispersion and just drag this over, drag this full to the 2.1. And then also on the index, I want to put the index to 1.6. And this is going to give us some some nice simulation. So what you guys could do is you could leave it right here and just do whatever you want with it. It looks cool like this. Really, it looks really cool. And the final touch we want to do here, we want to add is just the octane here, post processing. We're going to click on the camera here and this little tag, right camera, post processing, enable, and I'll put my blue power to 25 as always. There we go. And now what we can do is we can maybe um, change the background color here of the emission. We can just go ham and change this to something really intense. Um, what we could also do is change this to something, something like blue, but uh, make it really faded, which looks really cool. This looks actually pretty cool. Or like orange. There's so many, so many things you can do that look really cool. And yeah, that is, that is basically it. That's the tutorial. It's really simple. It's something cool to do, cool to recreate, something cool for like your daily works on Instagram. And this was the first Cinema 4D video. Um, just something quick. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to start off basic. There will be more complex things in the future, also with, with uh, plugins and everything. So stay tuned for that. And to the Blender users that are still watching, thanks to you all. And just thanks to everybody that is still watching back here. Um, and yeah, there's going to be a new Blender video next week where I'm going to be creating some nice artwork with Photoshop. Um, some nice song cover artwork. And yeah, I'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody.